Welcome back, ladies, to the Full On Purpose podcast. So it is a brand new month, the month of April. And this month, we're going to be talking about anxiety. So anxiety and stress, I'm going to kind of go back and forth between both of these terms over the next couple episodes. And I think I'm going to try something different this month. Instead of doing a long 20 to 30 minute episode. I think I'm going to continue with the mini episodes. You seem to like those a little bit more. So that is what I'm going to try to do. So today I'm going to talk about five oils to alleviate stress. Now these are essential oils that I'll be talking about. I do personally have a brand that I enjoy using, but this information will um, be available to you for whatever it is that you choose to use. So of course we all have stress, right? You have acute stress, you have chronic stress. Once the stressor is gone, the stress leaves. This is a natural rhythm, right? Your body is under stress when it exercises, when you fast, all of these different things. And so stress is not necessarily a bad thing, but chronic stress, stress over time that does not alleviate that's when we're gonna start having a problem, right? So let's chat a little bit about what actually happens in your body when you're under stress, okay? I am gonna have some Bible verses for you later on in this, so don't panic. I'm not going super far away from what I typically talk about, but you do know I have a health background, and so I just can't help it. I've gotta give you the facts too, all right? Because really, like I talked about last month, it's mind, it's body, it's soul, it's all the different things. If your emotional wellness is off, most likely your physical wellness is off. If your physical wellness is off, a lot of times your spiritual wellness is off. All of this goes together, okay? So all of this information is relevant. So here we go. These are uh, different things that happen when your body is under chronic stress. This means stress that is not normal, stress that is a longer amount of time than what it should be. Okay, so the number one thing, or just the first thing, these aren't necessarily in order, you have an increased risk of heart disease and diabetes. Now, if you are like me and in my family, I already have an increased risk, okay? So this adds an extra risk to what I'm going through, all right, with my family. Anything that increases our risk of these, these two things are important to pay attention to. Stress promotes chronic inflammation, which affects blood thickness and responses to insulin. Okay, you can become insulin resistant. I went through that 100%, okay? Um, Also, if you have ADHD, I talk about that obviously on the show and in my Facebook group, but if you have that, when you have increased inflammation, all of those symptoms that just drive you batty, they're gonna be worse, okay? Stress is gonna increase all these, well, I don't wanna get ahead of myself. Let me just move forward and follow the format here. Number two, decreased immunity. Have you noticed that you get sick more often when you are stressed? They can trigger colds, flu, cold sores, all that stuff. Stress hormones, this is what I was about to say, affect the chemical messengers secreted by immune cells consequently, okay? They are less able to do their jobs. Think about flu season, okay, quote unquote. Usually, All of these things are around holidays. They're around different times where things are real quick and hustle and bustle and you have your full schedules and all these things. Okay, so is it it because it's actually flu season or is it because your body's under chronic stress? The third thing, leaky gut. Guess what? I've got this one too, okay? Stress contributes to leaky gut, which is intestinal permeability. So your gut is not supposed to let things in. When you have leaky gut or you have IBS or things like that, basically particles are getting in your body and they should not be, okay? They are gonna get into your bloodstream where if you have a strong gut, your strong gut wall is gonna keep things from going in. It is not going to be permeable. Cortisol, which is your stress hormone, can open up tiny little holes by loosening the grip that digestive cells have on each other. Okay, think about Red Rover, Red Rover. You've got food coming through. If that link or that um, that place in your body, in your gut, is not strong, you're gonna be able to have things break through. We do not want Red Rover going on in our gut, okay? Food and particles leak through, get absorbed in the body, It's like putting things on the wrong side of the garbage disposal. You do not want to do it. All right, number four. Like I said, these are not necessarily in any particular order, but it helps to number things. So sleep disturbance, right? If you're stressed, most of the time you're up in the middle of the night staring at the ceiling trying to figure out all of your 
life, right? All your life choices, trying to think of what to do and the situations and the what ifs and all of that. It's often difficult to rest when you have all those things on your mind. Here's the thing. Lack of sleep affects your mood, your energy levels, your ability to think, and inhibits weight loss, okay? Sleep is super important. So let's talk about some stress-busting tips before I get into the scriptures and the oils, okay? Reduce stressors in your life. Ask yourself these questions. Can you put less pressure on yourself in the area of blank? You fill it in. You know what area is pressuring you the most. Is it for your kids to be in multiple sports? Is it to have um, super high grades in college? Or is it to volunteer for multiple different things at church? What is it? Can you put less pressure on yourself in the area of blank? Can you ask for help? Are you trying to do everything for everyone or could you delegate? Okay, I went through this with chores. I was doing everything in the house. It was causing issues for me because I was very frustrated. The house was not getting done because it was simply too much for me to take, you know, follow after four people, myself included, right? Of course, um, <clears throat> Ken picks up after himself. He's great. But the rest of us are not the best at that, okay? So can you ask for help? Can you say no? Do you have to say yes to everything? No. I will probably talk about this in another episode at some point. Okay. You do not have to say yes to everything. And if you are wanting to say no, but you're saying yes, let's evaluate what it is that you're really afraid of. Can you give this to your kids? Can you give this to a coworker? Can you ask your husband for help? Can you, um, <clears throat> Ask somebody to tag team with you and one of you teach Sunday school one week and one of you teach Sunday school the other week. Do you have to do everything yourself? No. Okay. Last thing, make a decision that's been weighing on you. All right. I know if I have to make a very important decision, even if it's not our life or death decision, it is going to weigh on me. When I was not sure what I was going to do, if I was going to leave public school, the public school system and move to the private school system, bring in my kids, moving them to a different school, um, changing homes, what are we going to do? Are we going to move from Walker to Denham? Are we going to do this and that and whatever? Okay. Which daycare to send Harbor, Harbor to? All of those decisions were weighing on me. And for me, that was the thing that was dangling right in front of my face. There was nothing else. Okay. It causes stress. Make a decision and own whatever your answer is and move on. So no matter how hard you try, you're not going to eliminate stress, right? You're just not. Stress is just a part of life. But let's talk about some oils that may help to be able to alleviate some of that stress. Okay? So you're combining these things that I just said, the stress-busting tips, you're avoiding these top four things that stress causes, and these oils will help you to bridge the gap in between the two. So it has to be biblical, right? That's what this channel is about, helping, to, helping women to be able to identify their, their place in Christ through the gospel, okay? through the Enneagram, through communication, through all of these different things, through boundaries. So the Bible contains over a thousand references to 33 different species of essential oils. A couple things to keep in mind. Many of these references and scriptures are not descriptive because the readers at the time did not need instructions. Okay, think about it. It's like cooking oil for us. Something may just say cooking oil. For those that are eat, eating healthy, you may think avocado oil, coconut oil, um, virgin olive oil. All right, so you don't necessarily need somebody to tell you what it is because it's just commonplace. The Bible is the same way. These were oils that they used every day for cooking, for health, for worship. So whenever the reference says oil, it could also mean spice. It could be referring to a dried herb. It could actually be the oil, right? Here are a few examples of how oils were referenced in scripture that were the most impactful to me for this study. So the first one's Ezekiel 47, 12, and there are a ton of them. I'm just trying to keep the podcast episodes to be a little bit less, right? So it says their fruit will be for the food and their leaves for healing. Revelation 22 and 2, the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nations. James 5, 14, is any sick among you? 
Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And in Numbers 16, 46 through 50, Aaron stopped a plague among Israel by fumigating, okay, which was diffusing, right? In our, our days, we would call it diffusing, with essential oils of frankincense, ancha, and myrrh. Okay, and I think galbanum too. All right, so let's talk about the five oils that I came here to tell you about. The first one is lavender. So this is one that most people, even if you don't know that much about oils, you've probably heard of lavender oils or seen pictures of the fields. I actually got to go to the fields in Utah. They are absolutely breathtaking. The pictures do not do them justice. So lavender is known as the Swiss army knife of oils. It can be used for so many different things, but for the purposes of this study, we're highlighting, of course, its relaxing properties. It is known to relax both the emotions and the body. So I use an oil on Harbor Kate every single night as a blend. It's got a little roller ball on it. She knows it's her oil. She knows what to do with it. It has lavender in it. It's very effective. The next one is orange or really any citrus. I have one that I love. It's called Citrus Fresh and it's a combination of all these different citrus ones, but this is one of my go-to oils. Citrus oils, um, they help to reset the tone in my house. They also make my kitchen smell amazing. It smells fresh. It smells clean. It lifts the spirit of anybody that it comes in contact with. My favorite way to use this one is in the diffuser because you don't want to put citrus oils on your skin simply because if you get into the sun, it could cause some irritation. The next one is Roman chamomile. Um, if you've ever heard of chamomile tea, the oil is even better. It helps soothe your anxious nerves. It's linked to helping also mental stressors like occasional anxiety or anger. I don't love the smell of this one, but usually if you don't love the smell of something, it's because you need it. So there you go. Next one is cedar wood. So this is actually one of Ken's favorites, but we've used cedar wood for years to help with mental clarity. So right before bed, you can use it on the, just the nape of your neck in the back. Um, as soon as my head hits the pillow, I have this list of to-dos that pop up, right? I don't know if you're like me, but most likely you are if you're listening to the podcast. So a few drops of cedar wood on the back of the neck, the to-do list, to -do list is no longer a concern. Yang Lang is the last one that I want to talk about. And somebody has asked me before, what is the best oil for just feeling balanced? I've talked about that in past episodes of just wanting to feel even and level and balanced. This is the one that I would suggest. Now, if your day just feels off and you don't really know why, this is the oil that you want to grab. Sometimes you might be battling anger or frustration subconsciously. You can't really put your finger on it or you don't really know exactly what's up. This is the oil that's going to help to soothe this over. Now, I have been asked in the past, can you combine oils? Absolutely. In fact, most essential oil companies are going to have blends where they have taken several of these oils, put them together for you in a convenient mixture. So yes, these oils can be mixed. Some are going to work better with, than others uh, together, of course. So in conclusion, to wrap this whole thing up, Using oils is biblical. Stress increases risk for heart disease, diabetes, immune issues, digestion, and sleep. But establishing routines such as using oils, asking for help, um, putting less pressure on yourself, saying no, delegating to other people, making decisions that have been weighing on you, all of those are going to help you to feel more calm, help you to overall just bring the stress of your body down, quiet all the noise in your mind, and be able to tackle all those tasks that you have on your to-do list, even if it is just to rest. I'll see you again next time. Love you girls.